Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Sorry for your slight delay. I am here. Uh. Sorry, I had to take uh, a little. I mean, not a break. I guess I just I just had to hurry and like grab a snack because I wouldn't be able to hold for the whole three hours or more <laughs> without eating something first. Uh. Anyways, I am here now. And I will uh, figure out the OBS stuff real quick. I'm the voice channel of the Discord server, if you guys want to join. Okay. <clears throat> Essential snacks, yes. Um, let's clean this up real quick. We are in this particular game. <clears throat> okay, put it. Okay. Uh, whatever, whatever. Transition. <clears throat> okay. Do you already have a key of replays? Yes, 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 yes. I have it from. Uh, from the server, so that should be my face. E, hello, frog. <clears throat> I don't hear the game though. Because I haven't switched to my computer. Um, should be lagging in a few seconds. If my keyboard works, though. <clears throat> so many issues. I'm sorry. Um, whoop. Switch the scene. Second screen. <clears throat> oh, let's go to the lobby exactly do we have sound no we don't because i switched uh oh darn so many stuff to set up that i should have set up earlier okay plugging the cable and we got the sound let's go <clears throat> okay I'm gonna hop on Discord and join the review. Okay, yeah, I also need to figure out some stuff. I got the capture card, I got the microphone, because I have changed a little bit of stuff in my um, Discord setup. So now, try talking, guys. Wait, no, 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 actually. Well, actually, do try talking. I think we hear you guys. Hello. <clears throat> Backup speakers. Okay, and I can also hear you guys. Cool. <clears throat> that so is good. Hearing is good. We got some codes. I'm gonna go grab something to eat because I have not eaten. Ever? You gotta try it, frog. It's pretty good. <clears throat> Did you just. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no. I'm waiting with uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's try that new stream setup I've got. I've got the app here. I've got the thing here. Close. Here, code. Boom. Oh. You guys can see the code. Uh, T Tech on museum splat zones. Let's go. Download scheduled. And now, if I go to the game, I can just click this. Boom. It's done. Boom. Replace. Download. Heck yeah. A <clears throat> little bit of setup, but now it's going smoothly, I think. Hopefully, it keeps going. Play. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Looks like I have a 10 second delay or something, so I don't know. Yeah, on Twitch there's usually delay compared to Discord. That's yeah. Because it has to transmit video. Um, I'm so gonna be like a good first... play and then 10 seconds later you get splatted and you're like, oh, I didn't, yeah. didn't need to see it. So this is my first mat, I mean, the first Splatoon thing of the day that I'm doing, so I'm kind of rusty. Uh, let's check, let's check. We got a Hydra and Elyr on the other team, and you guys don't have a lot of range to counteract that. <clears throat> uh, we're playing Splat Zones. Okay. Which person am I supposed to use? Okay, this one. Ah, I'm sorry, I'm rusty. Okay. Mm -mm.
I guess, yeah, the main play would be to just uh, use your, your splat bombs to pressure the two long range players on the other team. Yeah, just like that. That was a good bomb. Ouch. Uh, okay, nice splat bomb. Mm. I guess just watch out for the the hydro right now. Oh, good. This map is kind of weird for short range shooters because usually you don't want to be on the zone because if you get spotted, then you're helping the enemy paint the zone. Yeah. But here. <laughs> This map specifically, you do have the cover of the spinner, mm -hmm. so sometimes being on the zone is nice. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm used to longer range weapons, so usually it's easy for me to stay off the zone. But I notice in all, I think all five, four or five of your splats were on the zone, and that's a little sketchy. One thing you can do, I guess, is like if you stay close to the to the middle spinner, you can use it as cover, and then whenever you uh, you're pressured from one side, you can just rotate on the other side to to escape the person and throw a splat bomb behind you. So basically, they can't really follow you around the spinner; they have to go the other way around. But then you can predict yeah. them. I think um, I think maybe the issue there, and that the uh, I don't know who this is. Uh, Oh, Ler Lernal. I think Lernal, uh, it seemed like hmm, you weren't able to cap the zone, which is, one, that's a problem because of the objective, but two, uh, you weren't able to take advantage of Ulpers' advice of moving around the spinner and, and using a bomb to uh, make people scared of you because you didn't have any paint to swim in. You kind of dropped into enemy ink a little frequently plus yeah I, gu I guess it's mainly the fact that you guys had like short range versus two uh back lines like very good back lines so i i don't really know how you would do i don't have i guess it's just mainly bombs just spam bombs you you have the splat bomb and also the junior also has a splat bomb um so i guess those are good options to pressure them uh let me probably going on, going on the left side and going through that little alleyway might be good for short range shooters. I know when I'm on long range, I like to peek behind the pillow that's on my left side. So I'm not paying attention to the enemy's left side often. And that hmm. usually short range can then get up in my grill from there. Um, so we do this, and then we go to this, paste the code in here. No data found. Uh, fixing with a zero from Fortnite. Tower control on eel tail with the X splasher download. <clears throat> and then we go back. We go into the game. Go back in. A view the replay. Oop. That was the wrong button. Quick. And we can do it again. Download. Go back. G G twit. Hello. Uh, do you already have a queue? Yes. Okay. CG Twit says hi. Hello. I didn't see that you were streaming. Yeah. Well, not well, now. Not you do see right it. here. Yes. Exactly. <clears throat> uh, so let's check this one. Okay. I'm ready to do some VOD reviewing. Let's go. So. From Cerno, no comment on the match. Hello. Hello. Y'all looking to get a full group for Salmon? Y'all doing something else? Uh, we're doing VOD review. I should change my Discord username too. I did last night. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave y'all be then. Hope that goes well. Focus this streaming. Good luck fishing. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not 
a deep dungeon. Your friend Kira was the acting a lot of space in this game. Live. Oh, well, VOD review. Okay. Change. Should be good. Now people should know what's going down. Okay. We're playing with um, the Viper, some short range. They have uh, mostly. They have two pros. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's currently happening in the game? Dar. They've got the lead. And not the clear like this, okay? I'm not going on the tower here, but play. You mainly want to wait to have the advent. Okay, I think now it's the time to get on the tower. Looking at the team comps. I guess you don't really have anyone to really go forward and pressure. So you're mostly. Like, you, you don't have anyone that can just going all guns blazing and, and just net kills for free. So you, you really need to advance really? your team uh, slowly. You need to make sure to scan every corner and stuff like that. And also I noticed that your point sensors, you throw them like really short. You throw them right in front of you where you can already see everyone. Uh, it's better to throw them at walls to like hit uh, people behind them. Um, like whenever you throw a point sensor, you really wanna have an idea in mind of like, okay, I can see about everyone in front of me, but mm, maybe there's someone I don't see behind that wall or maybe like behind that cover, and you throw it intentionally to cover somewhere where you don't see visually already. You need to have an idea of what you wanna see. Oh, that jump though. That was... <laughs> Okay, good. You guys got uh, most of the wipeout. But I guess that's because they were close to your base. So here, yeah, you really need to basically get a few kills and start making them stagger. Just kill one, wait for the other to be in disadvantage, then kill them because they, they have less members and just keep killing them one by one. You have one member down, it's probably best to go back. Like, I, here I wouldn't stay, especially because you have ink on your left side. Uh, you, like, just at least check behind you, like with the camera, just check if you have some ink left to go back. Just pay attention to your surroundings, especially with the Explosher, because it's a weapon that's kind of slow. It's got great, uh, the it's got the ability to hit, like, above pieces of cover and, and do like uh, shots like these it also has the point sensor which allows it to have more recon but it's very slow so basically you want to use all of those tools all of those advantages you have uh, but make sure to be in a situation where you can use them comfortably you, you, you can't react as fast as a splatter shot would be able to so you really want to make sure that you're in a good spot watch your surroundings and stuff uh Okay, so we have... I think of that last bit, you probably wanted to keep the high ground on your area to contest mm -hmm. some of the enemies. Yep, especially um, because just the way in which the weapon works, it's better to have high ground. Because you need yeah. to hit the I don't think I've... floor or wall. I don't think I've played Explosher on this map, so it's kind of tricky. I think one thing I noticed is that on when you're on your bridge... You want to, you have some good range range advantage, so you should. You were kind of backed up on your bridge. You should be closer to the tower, like when the tower's in neutral, to better threaten and space out the enemies on their bridge. Still no data found, huh? Um. Oh, okay, okay. You and then this one is a zero. 
Okay, 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 so this one is the Luna. I guess, I guess for the last match we saw, um, one thing I noticed also is that whenever you were on your side of the, like, your high ground, you know, the little, like, bridge thing, uh, when you try to move forward to accompany the tower and, 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 and assist it, instead of dropping on the little, like, middle section that's, like, a bit above, like, the little rectangle, you dropped, like, on the floor. So basically, instead of having high ground, you were on the floor and you had a wall blocking your lines of sight on the on the left side. Uh, so that's another thing maybe. Just seek high ground, seek places where you can place yourself. Uh, so we've got this code, we can go back here, we can go back, go back in and don't run. General exposure advice that I'm trying to follow, but it's tricky, is always like Pay attention. You you want to be paying attention to your teammates more than the enemy, because you want to be assisting other people's fights, and you want to be assisting the short range shooters. And also, the short range shooters are going to protect you because exposure is completely useless in one in like as soon as anything gets close to it. I, I guess like really, if you if you had to describe the exposure, it would be very slow. It's it's. It's you have so to think slow. of the battle, not in, in like terms of sh of moment to moment gameplay, like who I'm gonna shoot, etc. You need to think of a general plan. It's like b because like your weapon shoots slow, but it paints very good. So if you if you throw it as uh, Neon Wyvern uh, suggested uh, towards a teammate, you can like help them with paint. Uh, you can use your point sensors to predict um, where enemies will be and ambush your teammates. Like you can throw the point sensor for your teammates, basically, and also the rain can like passively assist during a push that you can pr predict. But it's all very slow stuff that you that you have to think of in broad terms of, of big movements that happen in the game. Uh, anyways, uh, this replay on Flounder Hide Star Control with the Neo Luna. Uh, I saw on TikTok that someone got 150 eggs. Jesus, that's a lot of eggs. Ha! I got 130. It's not that far. You got carried by white suits. <laughs> hey, I, I pulled my own too, if you look at the scores. The that, that, was, that, was, music that, was, that was a crazy well. game. That was a crazy game. See that your stream. I'll, I'll put it up on YouTube um, real soon, hopefully. Okay, so here the Luna Blaster. Let's take a look at the calm. Pretty short range. You do have two buckets though, which is very good. That that might give you the advantage compared to the other team to hit above the tower. Okay, wipe out directly. That's cool. Now you just need to move forward and start securing the place. I would probably start camping on the right side of yourself right now, um, especially with the Luna. While well, you're you're good moving, ahead. so that's good. But one cool strat that you can do is like hide on, on your on your, uh, the left side of your screen right now, because the good thing with the Luna is it has a very big blast radius all around, so you can hit like very far to the side of a piece of cover that completely hides you. Uh, and it's the same if you hit above, and it's especially good in flounder heights because you have a lot of walls. So if you're like below a big ledge, you can hit above it while being protected. Basically, it's a it's a fight that's only advantageous for you um, and so if you hide on the left side not a lot of people usually go there to go out so they won't see you they won't expect you and once they pass over like uh, across of you once they well whatever you understand me. you you can shoot them from behind basically I would even suggest like trying to play in in that little spot under the bridge because your your shots can actually probably hit uh, people that are trying to cross the grate. Uh, you are down. Okay. I would even probably try to flank um, from there the bottom. Oh, dangerous! One v four. Probably not go. Cool, and we we'll probably provide super jumps to my team, especially because on this map you can totally like stay in, in spots like these and not be noticed by the enemy team, um, and provide super jumps in, in like locations that would be good for flanks basically. So yes, okay here same thing, 
uh, nearly got wiped out, only you left, we wouldn't, wouldn't be fighting right now. But it's, it's kind of working. Do try, like, especially if you have your team that's already fighting, like I see two people on the tower right now, you really don't need to be at, in the same location and be killed at the same time. You really want to take different angles. Um, especially, again, because you're the Luna and you can hit above cover really well. Uh, like, the buckets kind of can do that, but they're better on the tower, I, I would say. Uh, whereas you're better on uh, fighting with cover, around cover. Plus, I guess you got, like, really shorter range. So, especially, like, if you, if you leave the main approach to the buckets, they'll have more range to basically stay safer, whereas you'll have to get way closer if you want to do any damage. Um, so that's why it's better for you to be more of a slayer that takes off angles. See, like that, that kind of play, where you try to fight the, the person. Yep. Like, technically, you, can, you, you could have hit that person, like, behind the wall. Because you can just hit around it, um, or you can them just like gun or like up the wall, like this wall here, uh, to ambush them from behind. It seems like you're thinking you have more range than you actually do. I don't play Luna, so I have a hard time telling your range as well. I also have depth perception problems, but it seems like you're missing some shots. Seems like you're also hitting the ground a lot, especially when you try to paint. Like, there's hitting any surface with the blasters is never a good idea because it reduces the, the blaster explosion basically. And it, it, it doesn't even paint better, it, it paints worse. Except if you're trying to paint walls, that's the exception. Ouch. Yeah, let me let me take a look at the the fight in broader terms. Can I just go back a few seconds before and just see why that last push basically failed? Uh, but I think it's mainly because you guys don't really secure. Yeah, like the the ink that's placed here underground is mainly like forward. You don't really have ink on the side to like yourself go and and get them from flanks. And like that ink is them, is allowing them to flank you if they ever need to, not you to go and do the same. As a Luna, you don't have a lot of painting capability though, so I'm not sure you can do much about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's not necessarily about the Luna. Like there are other weapons in the in the team composition. Um, but if they're not doing it, and I, I mean, I guess like. It doesn't matter if you paint for your whole team, because like it's mainly just the Luna that's going to need to paint for themselves to go on the flank routes. But it's just like, from what I'm noticing, I don't notice any ink in that spot, which means that there is no attempt to go in that spot. Which is what I'm saying, it's it's a missed opportunity. Uh, Mio says, can me send VOD? So, uh, currently, we're just going to try to go through the ones we already have, and maybe afterwards we can have an extra round, but no guarantees. Um, I, I, I would prefer to just stick to the ones that are in the um, in the channel of the discord because that's easier and then if you guys want for like next week you can just send them there that's that's probably more practical so i have in my notes a game with this plush so let's check it whoop from sdr a knockout uh win on mahi mahi splat zones so let's check what it's all about so we go back. We go back. In that in. last match, I want to mention that I liked the ultra stamp usage. I think you you used it to hammer down a pretty narrow corridor and lock it down and bring it up ahead so that it made it harder for the enemy to approach and gave your teammates more space to work with with its paint. Yeah, well, that's kind of one thing that that's surprising me. Wait, I don't let the wrong code. I think uh, one thing that's like surprising me is how many kills you managed to get with that hammer and i think that's mainly due to the fact that yeah. really like this map even though it has like way a, a lot of like flank approaches and stuff like this people usually focus to the sort of l shape of where the tower goes 
And that's why the hammer yeah. worked so well, because everybody was going through that path. But like, if enemies were placed in other places, if they tried to like, you know, climb up the wall on the right side of their spawn, mm -hmm. and try to flank you from there, they they wouldn't be killed basically, and they would be able to get the tower from behind. But since everybody's just so over focused on getting to the tower, that some the hammer worked a bit too well, and your pushes didn't work that well either. Uh, so let me, yeah. let me check my. The code doesn't work. Boom. Uh, Which, yeah, yeah, going going on that L-shaped area is kind of predictable. And I think as a as a Luna, you can probably afford to take some interesting flank routes on that map. And yep. I noticed you were ahead ahead of the tower a lot of times, which is where the enemy expects you to be. I think you would want to be climbing up walls and, as Okris mentioned, taking Why? advantage of the fact that you can hit above ledges. Uh huh. Because especially because of your short range, you really don't want to be in like direct line of sight because you're going to lose. Espe so what was the team called? Yeah. They had uh, more range than you, basically. With the Nautilus and the, the 52, you don't want to be in the line of sight of those weapons. Um, I don't. I don't manage to access the code. Uh, it doesn't want to download for some reason. Even though it says that it will it'll do that, uh, it doesn't do it. So let's check the next one. It is here, whoop, we have, boom, boom, from Archie, we have, with the blob on Brinewater, Turf War, uh, interesting choice of weapon for Turf War, um, so let's go back, don't know, whoop, please work, okay, it works now, let's go, play. We got we got some good range. On the other side, we got two flingzas and pro and also the wiper, which also have lots of range. I think mm. I've only played on this map like three times so far. I was gonna say that they don't have as great painting power, but I forgot the wiper got a buff. It is now oh, the yeah. best painting weapon. Interesting hammer throw from the enemies. Um, so what should happen there? Maybe... I guess one of, of the sprinklers is already covering one of the flanks, which is good. Ouch. Okay, you're alone. Um, you need to think of a plan. We just probably try to hold off the enemies. From not watching the blob blobber, right? Uh, we're watching the blob blobber. I don't think who submitted the replay. That's the oh, blob. what is? Was it me that focused on this one? Uh, probably yes. Yeah, I think you. I think you switched to the next one. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, because I need to watch who it is. It's on the right side. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, nice. I'm gonna take a look at the map. Uh, yeah, you're probably going way too close to the enemies for a blob. You probably don't want to get as close as you are, because you never know who's standing in the ink slash who's standing there on the flank side. Uh, you really want to like play slow, basically, especially because like the blob can hit around. Okay, especially because the blob can hit around cover. Um, it should be pretty good. Where should be pretty good? I, I guess like if. If you're in that location you're currently in, like if there's someone standing here, uh, you can probably use the walls to basically pressure them from safety. Uh, but you shouldn't ever get too close. You have your sprinkler if you need to paint at a distance. You also have your rain. 
just play passively. Tr try to paint, to creep up the paint slowly. So you you want to be a constant pressure. Uh, you know, the ink bubbles, they're coming towards the enemies. It's kind of like annoying. They can't do anything about it. The bubbles are just going to block off a line. Same with the sprinkler. It's just going to put paint passively. Rain, same thing. You just want to play more slowly. Don't get as close. Yeah, I, I agree with playing slower and, and playing playing more safe because I don't think you got a single special off in that game. You yeah. gotta see the results. And rain is maybe maybe it's okay for turf four, but it's two specials. It does this paint. Oh, okay. I just don't remember them then. Because the, the thing with the with the blob is that it's a pretty slow weapon. It's the, it can get one shots, but it's not it's it's not good at that. Because look it at the can, fire rate. It can defend itself. But. It's one one one. I mean, I guess the fire rate is pretty okay actually if you spam. But it's like you need to hit all of the shots. If you miss just one shot, you need to start firing again. And it's not it's not guaranteed that you get a kill it's definitely a bit slower because it's hard to describe the speed of of killing someone just in, in like actual in-game practical terms like you, you can say like yeah the the dps is a certain number but then it also depends on whether or not you actually hit your shots or if the weapon makes it easy for you to hit your shots so if you don't have like god god senses of where to aim or like how to like because you see those targets are not moving if there's someone that's like actually swimming faster than even this dummy here in, in the back uh, you're definitely not gonna hit all of your shots and it's probably gonna take like two or three shots to actually kill them um, so you don't want you don't want to get close you mainly want to just send pressure like just sending those blobs really fast like this is really annoying because if I'm an enemy and I see so many blobs coming this way I really can't do anything about it and then you just Basically, that's a way that your allies can come in and fire themselves. Uh, and then same thing, rain to assist your teammates, and then some sprinklers to passively cover some flank uh, routes. That way, when you, whenever you look at your map, you can see, oh, it's starting to get painted over my sprinkler shots, then that means someone's coming here. Um, yeah, the th thing I would like is if there was an ability to see whenever players look at the map, because it's, it's pretty useful. Um, it, it's, it's, looking at the map is very essential in, in the game, and the fact that I can't know if you're doing it or not is, doesn't tell me the full picture, basically. Um, so let's go back to here, let's take uh, the next go, so, by the way, you've been saying, I've been playing Blob and I've recently been going on a massive losing streak, would anyone be able to tell me what I'm doing wrong, whether positioning, lack of kills, turf, etc, I'm really sick of losing. Um... Well, yeah, again, just play, play slower, uh, assist yeah, teammates I with, with paint and pressure. Yeah, I think, I think you can, like, I don't play blob at all, but I think what you do is you just, like, you pick a choke point that is relevant to a certain position, and you just throw bubbles all over <laughs> it, and you're like, this is, this is my area now. Yep. And then, and then once the enemy isn't trying to get to that choke point, or your teammate comes and teammates are, have already captured it and moved on, then you find a different choke point and you're like, this is my space now. I think that's how you play it. Yeah, I mean, most weapons, I mean, like, every every single weapon, like, just Splatoon in general, it's a game about, like, controlling space, it's a turf, like, even if you're not playing literal turf war, mm -hmm. you still need paint to move around. It's, like, it's the basis of all other things in the game. You can't get kills if you don't have paint up to the enemies. You can't secure an objective if you don't have paint to go up to the objective. You can't retreat and save yourself if you don't have paint to retreat. You can't do anything without paint. And if you have a weapon that's good at, at uh, doing the painting, like here, like the bubbles don't paint really good, but they paint in lots of places and make it annoying for the enemies. Same with the rain, it doesn't paint very like good everywhere, but it makes it annoying for the enemies. Same thing for the sprinkler, it makes it annoying. You're just supposed to be annoying. That's what it is. Uh, so the next yeah. code doesn't work. Let me take this one and try it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, Archie, be more annoying. <laughs> <For> some reason. <laughs> 
Altair, uh, ink blot, tar control with the brush. With the ink brush. So let's check that. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. Download. Battle replay has been downloaded. So, let's go. Okay. Pretty short to close range. They've got some shooters. Oh, you got you got your uh, view replay oh, overlay. Oh, thank you. So yeah, uh, they've got two pros. They've got also a 52 gal and probably okay. Let me check if that carbon roller has ninja squid. Da -da 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 -da. They do not. Okay, interesting. Ah, uh, you got wiped out. But they also have a oh, few members. But they're still gonna manage to push a bit. As long as you, as you go in and like kill that person really fast, they shouldn't be able to gather back again and, and start getting more score. Is this the correct person? Yes. Uh, so you have the slot bomb and you have the uh, killer whale, which should be able to displace people from the tower. Um, I don't know if getting on the tower is the best play. Who on your team could get on the tower better? I mean, I, I guess you just get on the tower if you need to, if you need to push the tower, it doesn't matter who. Um, I would say probably some, something like the wiper, because it has a one shot. Would probably be good. You're, you're probably better at doing like exactly what you did right there, just hitting above the tower and just making sure that you hit anybody anywhere in the tower, no matter why or how. Ouch. Uh, you nearly got the wipeout. Okay, nice. That's basically a wipeout. I think that was a good, good whale too. You saw some enemies. And... Yeah, it was just a good opportunity. You already had some paint, so you didn't have to worry about painting. Here, like the push that you did, uh, you, you yeah. could have totally like capitalized on it by by going all the way around the the map and went directly in their spawn and start started painting up all the way over there. Why uh, you are on the on here? Yeah. I do like the decision to harass them there when they're kind of being staggered. Okay. It's hard as scores going. Okay, you guys are not winning this yet. The thing that you're painting the flanks kind of like you're you're starting to paint them. Yeah, I like that. I, I don't know if like going around the tower like this is a good plan. Rather than just staying in your ring. <laughs> it's is like, it could work if you're just fighting off against one singular sniper, because then, like, if you avoid their shot, then they have to charge again. But here, you're just basically making it easier for the enemies to hit you, but they're only going to hit you half of the time. But they're, they're if they can hit you, they are going to hit you, because you're not in your ring. You're, like, very visible and very easy to access. Yeah, I think it's okay when you have no other choice, but you could have probably dropped from the tower there. The main play when you're on the tower, as you often see players do, is just like um, try to hide in the ink, try to use the pillar as, as cover, go around the pillar, stay in your ink as much as possible, and whenever it gets painted over, you just paint a bit, go back in your ink. Yeah, make it, make it so that the enemy doesn't really know what side of the tower you're on. They can assume pretty easily. But... Mm, also, like if you're trying to get back the tower, especially if they're trying to push up on your base, I don't necessarily think you need to go all the way up to the tower because that, that's one issue. If you get, I mean, your your kill time 
it can, like it can be very fast if you spam like fast enough, but I wouldn't count on it. Um, the best way to pressure the tower, honestly, is just to use your bomb, because like you do have some range with this weapon, just considering your hit. If you don't, that that was a very risky way to go down. But yeah, don't don't forget about your bomb. You can totally, if the tower comes like over the ramp here, you can stand up here, like on, on the ledge or on the clam, and just put put splat bombs on the tower, and that's gonna force them basically to to get off of the tower. Um, and then you don't have to actually climb on the tower and risk dying yourself. You can just keep spamming. Maybe like if, if they come like too close to your base, um, you use your brush to paint the floor a bit and then you charge your special. Uh, basically you paint over them. Because that's the thing, your, your weapon is pretty good at, at painting in one spot. And if... Like it doesn't have too much range, but it paints very fast. So if you have like the height advantage uh, compared to the enemies, you can just like brush uh, like put some paint and it's just gonna fall down and ink the ground below you so having basically being on a ledge allows you to paint over the enemies uh, do some passive damage and also use your bomb from a safe location and then you can charge your special with this and then use your kill whale and whenever you use your kill whale a good thing to do is like throw a bomb use kill whale to get an ink rifle and then throw another bomb that way you have like three ways to pressure at once it's very good. Like you can, for example, throw a bomb uh, on the tower, then pop a killer whale, then throw a bomb uh, below the tower, and then if they try to escape the bomb that's on the tower and they go down, they're probably go gonna go down on your bomb. And if they don't, then they they'll have the killer whale on their back. So they they're gonna need to escape farther than in they would have wanted to. They can't basically just camp behind the tower and wait to get back on and kill the people that, the, from your team that are trying to capture it, basically. Uh, so this was it. Let's go to the next, uh, flip. The next, uh... uh one thing I noticed, I think it was, like, with a minute left or something, uh, the tower was on your side, and you guys had gotten a wipeout or something, and you started pushing forward, but you were riding the tower as well as another one of your teammates, and one, once the tower is already moving back to neutral, Having somebody stationed on the tower doesn't make it move any faster. And two, you usually don't want to have two people on the tower. Oh, and and if, yeah, move having the tower. Hmm, bleh. <laughs> if the tower is already moving to neutral, you don't want to be on the tower because if you're on the tower, the enemy knows where you're at. Yeah, but so, I mean, I, I guess you can still do that because it does make it go faster. It, it, it is a, a slightly faster, I think. Oh I mean, really? Well, from, from what I've noticed, it's because whenever it goes back, like, it, it just feels slower, and I do think it's slower. I, I think I've heard it somewhere, but it's... Okay, I'll have to pay more attention. I do know that having multiple people on the tower doesn't make it go faster. It makes it go through checkpoints faster, mm -hmm. but it doesn't yep. move faster. So it did have... in Splatoon 1, and that's something I had to unlearn. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, we have this game on Mahi Mahi Rainmaker with the brush. That's going to be interesting. Another brush. Uh, so I, I guess what I can figure out right now is that Mahi Mahi is a pretty small map, and you have the brush, which is great at just uh, buzzing around everywhere. So you can just go behind uh, the the enemies uh, from the from the right side of the map. <clears throat> yeah, I think the right side is the rat you prefer as a brush. Yeah. Um, 2v2, okay. I would probably... Okay. This worked. No complaints. Good, you got the checkpoint. Good first play. <laughs> One issue I personally have, um like with my strategies is that I don't value the um, the strategies of just pushing and making like a crazy push and like just getting the checkpoint right but here it worked and, and having the checkpoint uh, cleared is very good for later in the match so it worked even though you died um, but my, my, my just my brain doesn't let me go in a situation where I know I'll die eventually so that's why 
this seemed like a bad play, but it, it was actually pretty good. And it's okay. I feel like most times when you get a checkpoint, you die because it's pretty clear where the Rainmaker is at and the enemy just shoots there. Oh, you got a disconnect. Hmm. Oh, no. Team comps, they've got more range, they also got the machine, mm -hmm. and you guys got... You guys have the bamboozler. Um, I do think the bamboozler can combo with one of your ink brushes. So if you do... I mean, it's probably... I mean, you're not... You're probably playing with randos. Uh, but if you do see someone being fired at by your bamboozler, just try to capitalize on that and get a one-shot. With just like one oh, swing nice of your brush, bomb. you can get a kill. Um, so here, probably the play to do would be to go down the ledge, because then it's gonna be harder for the enemies to grab the ringmaker and get, make it go up. Swim. Sometimes I feel like I you should be sw swimming more as the Rainmaker rather than charging shots. Because um, sometimes I have the misfortune of, of thinking I'm smart by going back with the Rainmaker to try to like pressure them with the shots with, from a bit more safety, and then it, it just ends up backfiring. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me a lot too. So definitely want to push forward. Because even if you die, I guess, like, if you do die uh, with the Rainmaker in your hand, then your team is going to have one member down, but then all of the enemy team is going to be focused on the on the Rainmaker, or at least, like, one of them. So it's still going to be kind, kind of the same uh, on, on both teams. I think you always want to push up with the Rainmaker, but never ahead of the teams. Maybe, yeah, maybe not never, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, especially in the beginning here, the play works. Also, like, one just general tip for Rainmaker is to use the Rainmaker to assist your teammates. Because you can't really do anything yeah, exactly. alone. And, and like, it's hard to coordinate with randoms, uh, but if you do, at least, if you have the Rainmaker and you know, okay, they're probably not necessarily going to assist me, you know, they're going to do their own thing. So how can oh. I assist them, basically? How can I stick close to them? And the best thing you can do is just fire your shots towards them to give them ground paint and assist them in fights with enemies. And then maybe they can win the fights, get some kills, and then it's going to make it easier for you to push up as a Rainmaker in, uh, just because of that. Uh, here with the brush, I would probably like go all the way around the map and, and just like start flanking them. While they're focused on the bubble on, on the right side of the map, you just go on the left side. Especially because your Tetras and the Bamboo do have like some decent range. And they can like go on the main path. So you can totally take flank angles, I feel like. I would send ink send paint over your rainmaker. You need to paint over your rainmaker guy. There. You could have like either painted uh, over your rainmaker or like threw a bomb towards them. Like same here, I would have probably not focused on the rainmaker because you sh you saw shots coming like inches from you uh, hitting the rainmaker. You could have thrown a bomb and then just uh, escaped. Yeah. They they could have easily shot you too. Uh, did you have any comments? Da -da -da. I can't believe you guys won that too with the disconnect. That was very good. Uh, hey, can I get some thoughts on this? It turned into a 3v4, but I still won. However, it was close and I feel like I could have done better. Yeah, probably taken more uh, flank angles and uh, just think of the of the thing with the Rainmaker. Always either try to stick and assist the Rainmaker or if you are the Rainmaker, fire your shots towards your allies or in between your allies and the enemies. Um, so we have I like points. the decision to use bombs to either hold down that choke point by the right side or to, um, like, if your team is down, you're throwing it at the Rainmaker that just got popped in the enemy color. Uh, 
and that worked out pretty well. But I think there were some other times where you're throwing bombs where you didn't have to. Uh, like when your other teammates are alive, I think you don't have to be playing it safe with bombs. I think you can be pushing up because you're a fast brush and you can move fast. Uh, so we have three codes from Pogriff. Oh, he's got perfect gear. I might not be qualified to VOD review him or them. Pog. Griff. I'm doing wrong. How should I play to pick up slack from my teammates? How should I improve? So yeah, that's probably why I picked uh, those codes, even though he sent three. Because um, uh, they, they, they want to know how to pick up slack for their teammates, and this is good mentality. Did I also see three subs of sub power up? That's interesting. Uh, sub power up on this weapon is more range, basically. More, more, yeah, range poking. I don't know it what might, it might work. I kind of want to try it now. Uh, but uh, so on Flounder Heights, Clown Blitz, interesting. So definitely Clown Blitz, you, you don't really want to all be pushing on the same side. You do want to have plenty of angles where you're approaching from, and this map does have quite a few approach angles. I mean, it, 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 star it starts to tighten up at the, like, when you get close to the basket, but basically right before that, because, like, if you look at the map, the basket is right here. If you do want to get to it, like, you can't really go up here. You, you still need to go through there. But basically, getting to the pillar, you can go from from this side, from the left side. You can go from the right side, like, multiple ways, like here, from down there. And you can also, like, drop down straight through here. Uh, where are you? You are the... I forgot. Which person are we watching? Oh, yeah, the junior. The junior, okay. Because sometimes it just inverts on the HUD. If your team, uh, bravo. So they have two. Okay, you need to start defending. Oh, definitely throw a bomb there. That's probably too late reaction. Ouch. Okay, they have 57. That's gonna, like, you guys are gonna need to put two big clumps and then one small one. So you, if like if you need if you want to push now to get the lead back, you're gonna need to be coordinated with your teammates. I don't know why you're going back. Why did you do all of that? <laughs> you're already there. Okay, that was um, an interesting move. Mm, yeah, uh, you weird. are at a disadvantage. I would probably just provide super jump. There's someone coming up on you. Uh, maybe a big bubbler to provide super jumps, safe super jumps. Um, they do have... Okay, it's right here, the enemy power clan. Okay, pretty, pretty good big bubbler. I'd probably also say it this way, to indicate to the, to the teammates that they can super jump here. I heard an, uh, a teammate die behind you, also one forward. So you should have probably watched out. Uh, two power times. There's one approaching very soon. Probably start throwing bombs. Okay, pretty good. Ouch. Yeah, usually if like if people go down, um, like the other person did at the beginning of the match, they're gonna be kind of stuck. If they wanna like es escape, if you throw a bomb here. They can only really escape here, or like if they have enough time and the, and the wall is already painted their color, they can just like jump quickly. But that's less reliable. So really, throwing a bomb on the little pedestal here, it it makes the enemies need to go back. It basically stops their their clam throw uh, instantly, pretty much. Uh, so you guys are pushing forward um, with a power clam. Okay, you, you got it in. You got it in. Cool. Um. So yeah, it probably need a better, better coordination on that push. More pain on the ground probably. Also in your base, like you don't you don't want to let them with too much pain because then it's gonna make it easy for them to 
come back and yeah they have an easy line as you, if you can see like on the top part uh, going diagonally to your basket they have an easy way to get in and here the rain only like aids them even more I would probably if I have time paint the walls as well like don't don't let walls uh, be painted their color because that provides them easy escape routes if they ever get in trouble like especially the wall here near the pillar you really want to cover it back because that gives them an option and it removes an option from you if you ever need to escape uh, you have two power clams but also not any teammates justice with uh, dunking them you're also like very visible here yeah I try throwing them just to not be marked to make you an okay plan like, yeah like I don't know if you know the strat of like having only seven uh, clams and then waiting to get the last one or maybe like throwing uh, a clam like forward uh, that way you have one to grab really close to their basket or even having a teammate to pass you the last one well since this map has plenty of approach option you can you can totally like have your teammates distract them on the main path and then take the path on the on the left side um, and just have make the power climb really close whenever you're close to the basket basically uh, you don't really have any escape wraps if you want to escape here you don't like you need to start painting up you never want to stay close to the because yeah I, I get what you were trying to do here you were trying to keep company to the enemy power clamp so that they can't get it right you're like the bodyguard if they try to get it you kill them problem is you, you're not gonna protect the power clamp by just standing there ooh, ooh. yeah the, the way to protect the power clamp in splatoon a game about painting is to paint to paint the ground paint around the clamp to prevent them from going in paint around the clamp to like just give yourself some options to escape you know, to not die if they, if they corner you. Because here, like, all the walls were painted um, in the enemy's color. Um, and, like, every single piece of ground around the power clam was just in the enemy's color. So if, if someone jumped on you, you had literally no options to escape or, like, move around. And you were probably going to die, and they were probably going to get the power clam again and be able to dunk. Like, to really I like the decision at the end there to have the power clam and then super jump. I usually forget that that's an option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I guess that's because like back in, in Splatoon um, 2, I, I think if you did super jump with without a power clam, it just dropped all of your, of your clams. And then if you did super jump, I think, I don't know what happened to the power clam. Uh, maybe it got destroyed or maybe that was only if you super jump back to your spawn. I forgot. But here, like it doesn't, it doesn't do that anymore. You can super jump freely at any time, and it keeps all of your clams. Um, and that was also, I think, with the with the, um, what what is this special call the splashdown? It also dropped all of your. Um, also, the 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 bowl. Reef slider drops all thing. your clams now. Oh okay. So you know there's that. there's still something that does that. So we have. Which ones did we have? Uh, I, for gore. For gore. I, I agree with most of your evaluation on that one. I think, uh, I don't remember the name of that player, but Pogriff should, uh, should focus, focus more, more on, on developing an, an aversion to enemy ink. Mm -hmm. uh, spend, spend more time painting it. And you didn't necessarily seem, you didn't get sharked, I don't think, there, but there were some times where you just kind of went into an area that was very pink and the enemy is going to have an easy time moving in that area and taking you out so spending a little more time painting i think is a good place to start improving mm -hmm. uh so next game from pogriff uh high goldfish market to hard control let's check it so yeah i, de I definitely do notice uh, this may be like because they're lower rank because i do see that the the there's also some struggles with aiming so it's definitely something like it's harder in the lower ranks to realize how much paint is actually important to the game. It it because it, it only feels 
especially because at higher levels you mainly see players just spend all the time in their ink, then go out to shoot and instantly go back in their ink. You, you really see them do some like some squid flops kind of movement. Um, and in lower level play, you often see people. Okay, well that that was still pretty squid floppy. But I feel like in lower levels you see people uh, walk a bit more. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to say is I kind of forgot. We just play spot lane. Spot lane walk. Uh, so we have the forge on the other side. We have the hydra. We have two long range. Uh, on the enemy team, they have the stamper. Oh yeah. The, the range blaster and also the sculptures. Okay. Ouch. Uh, let me take a look at the map real quick. Thanks pretty good. Uh, mid kind of ah. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. So we go down again. Nice. Uh, too many people on the tower. Good thing you drop down. I would probably use my Booyah Bomb preemptively before dying, uh, in order to like put it in front of the tower, right? And that would, if you put it in front of the tower, it would have prevented the enemies from getting on it, and it would have given you a few more seconds on your push, which would have given you more score, basically, um, and more chances yeah. to win. I agree, Booyah's pretty good on that ramp. And also, like, if you can do the, again, the combo of throwing your sub, then using your special and throwing another sub, you can have, like, a suction bomb. While you charge your Booyah bomb, the, the suction bomb will have exploded. You throw your Booyah bomb, and then you throw your suction, your next suction bomb even farther than the Booyah bomb. And that gives you, like, a ton of mileage out of your push, just by yourself. And then maybe you have the Hydra, uh, like in the meantime, just charging up their their shots, and then they can start firing as soon as as your uh, push is over. I mean, as your defense is over, basically. Uh, we'd probably start painting back mid a bit more. That way you have an easy escape route if you ever get pressure like you are right now. You can see, like here, you're yeah, you're kind of struggling. Do always check your surroundings, have more paint, more escape routes. Paint is important. Here, if you like forget, kind of... there's someone, okay, on the lower side, good, you covered them. Let's start focusing on the right side, pretty good. Nearly a wipeout. I liked that fight that you had against the blaster. You recognized when you were in danger and had to back up. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Um, blanks, okay. For now, the map looks pretty good. The mid is in your color, so that this is good. You have uh, a good amount of teammates in your mid. There's a, a dangerous super jump, okay. Mm -mm. Okay, wipe out, pretty good. I would just go back to the tower right now. Maybe even super jump. Get to mid as fast as possible. Wipe out, we. You, like you can super jump the same thing. Yeah. Also, yeah. For, in this situation, I don't know if, if I would jump over the ledge because I'm I would be an easier target. I think you, with your range with the spot shot pro, you can totally fire from from below, from like this little thing. You don't have to get up here. Uh, I would probably use my suction bombs a bit more, honestly. On just especially on this map, suction bombs should be pretty, pretty good. Because um, like the uh, the approach options aren't that big. It's not like you were if you were playing on the uh, Scorch Gorge, where like the the pathways are very big. Here you have the two flanks on the side. A suction bomb can pretty much cover like the entirety of them if you throw them like smack dab in the middle. And then the suction bombs, either you throw them on one side and then and then shoot your main weapon on the other side, and then you got it all covered, or they or just like throw the suction bomb and smack dab in the middle, and then it's gonna make like give a slight suggestions to the enemy to stay behind to stay away basically. suction gong bombs are very good 
Mio says I'm a go. Okay, thank you for tuning in though. Hi Mio. Uh, there's that person uh, in the Discord that say that said, uh, "Oh, I'll be there," because they they wanted someone to review in VC. They aren't there yet. So, uh, quit the replay. I think, Where I think that we? was played pretty good. There were maybe a couple times where you could have paid more attention to the tower and got a little distracted with some flanks, uh, but turned out okay. So this was the second game, and I think the third one is... Uh... I think the main question though was how can I assist my teammates better? How can I pick up slack for them? Um, well, let's check on this map if we... Well, there you go. Don't get distracted by a flank as much. Focus on yep. the tower a bit more because your teammates are going to be focused on the tower. I mean, especially because you had the Hydra, like definitely the, the Hydra can provide good uh, fi f cover fire for the tower as long as they have time to charge. And again, the, start, the strat that I mentioned earlier, like just uh, using your Booyah bombs and your suction bombs a, a bit more would have given them time, basically. You put them in between your team and the enemies and then it gives them time Ooh. to prepare themselves. So, okay, we're playing Clown Blitz on Brinewater. On your team, you have two slashers. On the enemy team, you have uh, one slasher, the Nova. On this map, you definitely the range is pretty advantageous because just of the massive size of mid. Um, so they do have. I do feel like they would have an easier time um, because they have faster, longer range options. They have the Nova and the Bucket, which are pretty fast, long range options. Whereas you mainly only have the exposure thing. I mean, no, the. I, d I really don't know the range of the machine. There are some weapons I do not know the range. I know their mechanics, like uh, the machine, I know that it's a pretty good killing tool and that it can hit above cover, but I really don't know its range. Just some weapons uh, like this, I don't know. It's a little shorter than the pro, if you know the pro's range. Mm -hmm. I play machine quite a bit, so I know its range well. Uh, we're spending a lot of time in the Yeah. Yeah, especially because I, I saw them I uh, start charging up their special by just hitting above the ledge. But then now that they have their special, they're not using it. And I hope that they're going to at least use it before dying. Yeah. Uh, which is not you the could, case. You could, you could charge your special by painting green instead of painting uh, mm -hmm. your base. Especially if you're not going to use your specials either way, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I think those, like the plays are way too risky. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you do want to pick up slap, slack for your teammates, as you were mentioning, uh, well, definitely try to stick closer to them, at least, instead of super jumping or, like, staying in base. You want to be close to them, basically. Especially with this weapon that you're having right now. Um... Let's say, for example, the Explosher, which is going to have a harder time pain. So that, that was a weird reaction. So you had the Killer Whales on you, and your your solution to escape was to go like straight to the enemy's base, which didn't help you uh, any in any way. Um, and also, yeah, so you have the Explosher, which is kind of slower to paint. So I would probably stay close to it and use my main weapon to assist them. This is pre a pretty awkward place there. But anyways, use your main weapon uh, close to the Explosher to assist them with paint because they're going to have a harder time painting from themselves at their feet. And then use your bombs, uh, your splat bombs, and throw them at your teammates to help them in fights that they may be in. I don't know why you're pushing so far, you don't have a hard one. I think it's okay to push far here. I mean, the, like, the has, thing is, if the team they has ever a get plan, pressured, they, jump. Yeah. they yeah, don't really have uh, a way to escape here. I mean, it's, the, the mid is not painted that well. Uh, where I, should I look? I should look here. I see, I see what you were, go you were going for, Poker, with the fog. With the, the this way, it looked like you wanted to have your teammate with the power clan to jump to you, but they didn't. Oh, I guess, yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's assuming that the, that the team is going to coordinate it. Yeah, I think in, a, in solo queue, it's probably 
kind of, you just kind of got to get lucky and hope that your teammates figure it out. I'm, I mean, mm, lucky. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily. I, I don't, don't have the necessarily rank, luck. Like if they don't do it, basically, just don't try to make the same strat again. If they're not gonna follow you this way and super jump with the power harm, then don't try to do the strat again, hoping that they would do it. Just start. Like one thing yeah, is platoon, it's a team game. But oftentimes people just do their own thing and they pick like weapons that, that are all rounders and they start like playing for themselves. Um, if you like have, if you know that Splatoon is a team game and you, you want to have a team that collaborates more even in solo queue, then you can do the extra effort of, of like going where your teammates are going going into the fights that they're going even if they if like you don't want to right and just being their teammate even though they don't want to be your teammate basically you know like doing the extra step to basically be the glue that holds the team together wait oops that was the wrong button but yes you, you do want to be closer to your team if, if they're not going to super jump to you or like uh follow the strats just be there to assist them whatever they may end up doing Pick up, pick up Actually, the stock for them, as you were saying. Yeah. I think you, towards the middle of the match, I think you did okay with playing your team. Like the moment we're talking about where you, you were pushed pretty far up and you were this way, uh, you did have a teammate with you. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, I'm mainly concerned about the escape routes because it, it didn't seem safe to go in. If an enemy was there to intercept right. that mid, push, mid there was cool. no way to yeah. secure that. Um, so let's go next, next clips, next clips. Uh, this one yeah, I think, is... I think the most egregious it. thing to fix was the, those first two moments where you had a power clam and you were back in the base, not really helping your team, hoping that they would push up for you. Oh, because that's why they up. were waiting there. They were, they were, they were waiting for a super jump. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're going to do that... Then maybe, maybe consider, consider a different, different weapon, weapon, something that's more long range, so you can at least be shooting into mid and at the enemy space, and and then jump. Be be useful while you're waiting if that's the route you want to go. I'm not sure you should be going that route, but that might be something to consider. Although you're a junior, what you can be doing is just throwing bombs on mid. Mm -hmm. Um, and also I guess like you. Did they put a special down to help with super jumping uh, near the basket safely? Uh, I think they, I think they did when they were able to get to the basket. I, re I remember seeing it once. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Therefore, because here, here's the thing too is like. E People, they're not usually gonna look at their map at all during the games. I don't really think people do that a lot. Uh, and they're definitely not gonna super yeah, jump to teammates while, like, people often usually super jump only when they're respawning. Like, n never otherwise. Except me, because I'm a, I'm a weirdo. But, um, yeah. That um, was... So we have this game from Jin on Wahoo World Turf War. Let's see. So did they yeah, have sometimes, sometimes I'm flicking my map up, but I'm usually not having it long enough to evaluate that I can super jump. I'm usually just checking to where are my teammates and does the enemy have mid, things like that. Uh, so they're saying, hey, I got a few more replays of some practice battles in Pro 4. It would be great if someone could give me criticism for my carbon gameplay so far. Okay, so you do have the splat bomb and you do have the tri slasher. Struggling with movement and, and aiming. Do you have a plan? Do you have a plan? Because you don't really seem to have a plan there. You, you went down, you tried to jump, didn't end up working. You're throwing burst bombs at the walls. Do you have a specific plan in mind? Pretty good use of the burst bomb on the e leader to make them go back. I mean, to just pressure them. Yeah. It's not going too fire. Alright. So you're playing turf war, you definitely want to focus on 
having solid ink everywhere because if you leave some easy flank routes for your enemies to come in and then they ink your base behind your back uh, or like at the last minute it's definitely yeah that, like people say that turf war is like it can turn around in 30 seconds but that's mainly if that's mainly if you let leave stuff unchecked like it, it it's not like people can just like win a game when you're spawn camping them right um, there's definitely a limit to how much the enemies can catch back up so do focus on sec securing the ink kind of everywhere the thing with turf war is there's no clear objective there's no objective to focus on Ouch. Uh, watch your surroundings a bit more I would say pretty good escape there uh, you should definitely use your camera to check the angles a bit more uh, so what was this? Oh, is there an enemy in your base right now? Yup, seems like it. Uh, okay. good, good attempt to shock them, but too late of a reaction. Nice. Um, so yeah, the thing with Terra 4 is that you don't have a real clear objective uh, that's in the center of the map. N not every single person is going to be in the same spot as with other game modes. They're going to be more spread out. Every single approach option is a valid approach option, basically, because every single piece of ground that you're going to be able to cover is a valid piece of ground to cover. Um, so that's why it's important to really cover everything, be very meticulous. Don't forget about like some, some other flanks on the side, because anything that you leave up to luck is a thing that could turn against you. Uh, yep. Okay. I don't, I don't have much to say about that. You seem to... It says they're just practicing with carbon, but that seems like exactly like what you want to do with carbon. They were sharking and they're moving to get into sharking positions very fast, taking advantage of their speed and using burst bombs to, to be annoying and prompt people to either move or some yeah prompting people to move so that they move into a position that you're better able to smash them yep i, w I would say definitely it feels like uh, it, it feels to me like it's lower level play and you you're still maybe struggling with uh, having a plan in general and maybe just like reaction times and stuff like this, th this would be the two main things I would uh, try to improve on. Um, next code so we have Tentatec on um, which one it is? CGG Twit says the replay menu music is so good. Yeah. What, what does CGG stand for? Uh, CG is uh, Cold Galaxy and G, the last G I don't know, and Twit I don't know. But it's CG, it's CG Cold Galaxy from uh -huh. Discord. It's the person who helps me make, make the, the conlang. Um, we're, we, we, we're events pretty good thanks to their massive help that they're giving. Uh, so we have the code. We go back, we go back in, we download the replay. And this one is the tent attack on Brinewater Rainmaker. Let's go. So I see a Hydra hmm. on your team. Wait. Oh, hello, by the way, big man. Hi. Sorry, I'm quite a bit late. Whereas your, your replay is a bit later down the line. So, okay, on this team, uh, we have the glue gas. Um, da -da -da. You, by the way, you can tune into the to the Twitch stream. That's where the, the video is if you want to take it to the gameplay uh, while we're working. Right. So, thank you, glue gas, Hydra, Spire Shot. They already got a dunk. Uh, probably going way too frontal there. I would say, because especially on their team, they have the sniper rider, they have another splash shot. They do also have the sculptures. You you don't want to be 
they have either the same range as you or more. So you don't want to be uh, fighting them uh, in frontal, basically. And I'm not quite sure yet, but it feels like you also have some trouble with just general aiming. use a special. I would probably start using my splat bomb there. Like that that would have felt like a perfect moment to throw my splat bomb and pressure the enemies. Okay so here you definitely want to start shooting a lot. Don't don't go for this is dangerous you don't have anything near yourself. Uh, it works anyways. Okay check one that's good. Mm, trying to find tips. That would apply the best. Some some easy tips. Easy stuff that you could apply. That's simple to focus on. Um well it, Yeah. Oh, but you wanna push up ahead of your rainmaker. Instead of behind them. Oh, unless you're playing I mean, for special. Th that's the that's the thing though. I wouldn't necessarily advise this to this player specifically because it's it seems to me like just watching the replay that it they still struggle with uh just aiming and movements the, the mechanics of the game in general they they don't they're not uh mechanically proficient very proficient at the game yet so i wouldn't say go forward from the rainmaker because that would just they would probably just die they need to play more safely like learn some more stuff so i don't really know what i could yeah. suggest there that would improve your your game skills, uh, except more practice. But yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say go in front of the Rainmaker if you're not confident that you can win. But definitely what I would say more is um, assess the situation and see if you think that you could win. If you are pretty like down to earth about your, your performance and you know, okay, I'm not good enough yet to like fight that guy, he seemed like way too good for me. And then you know if you can go into a fight or not, or if you need teammates near yourself, to assist you um, and it's just it's just gonna take a bit of time but just be realistic about what you can do and what you cannot but this was a pretty good win though still um, I guess so it, it's I, a little hard, hard. It's, oh, go ahead no no go go it's a little hard to tell because the replay was so short um, but yeah I guess the there was that one duel that you had with the the dually squelchers um, and yeah, I guess to be more specific about what you're saying, Ulcris, um, practice movement. And in that duel with the dually squatches, it seemed like they had noticed you before them and you were kind of standing in one place and shooting. What you should do is shoot at them and then if you miss a little bit, just swim in your ink to get to somewhere different. So that's harder for them to predict where you're going to be and you have just a bit more time to... Yeah, from, from the comments that they While you're fighting, to replays, also be swimming. Yep. From the comments that they added to their replays, they say, I play tentative Splatter Shot and playing Rainmaker in this match. Can someone give me more general feedback and advice? I tend to get splat quite some games. I don't know what that means. It really depends on match. Here, the replay codes. Um, so I don't really... Uh, not correct English. So what I'm assuming is that they sent their best game. Um, def definitely I would advise sending some of your like just average games where maybe you, you get losses because this was a pretty good win um, but Even yeah it's a game but just a, a game that lasts the entire time there wasn't a lot of meat to go off of there mm -hmm. in my opinion yep splat is irregular for them mm -hmm. I think yeah pro probably if you do notice that you still have I mean, I see, that's kind of where I, I can't really suggest, yeah, pick a weapon that, like, if you can't aim, pick a weapon where you don't need to aim, because then, when are you going to learn to aim, right? I mean... Yeah. Just just keep what? just keep playing, you'll get it, eventually. Yeah. Splatter Shot's probably the best weapon for it, because it has yeah, good accuracy, good but its accuracy isn't, like, that high that you have to be really skilled at it, kind of thing. I mean, I guess even the junior is kind of good in those situations. It's basically the the more yeah. inaccuracy it has, uh, the less you need to aim precisely, like very precisely, right? If you're trying to 
teach someone to start aiming like kind of correctly because they really have like no clue how to use motion controls and stuff like this you don't want to start them with the splash that's definitely not where they should start so definitely yeah the, the more spread that it has the better it is for learning to aim because if you just hear the whoop, the splat sound that means that you were in the general area of, of aiming and if that area is bigger that means you have you can refine right you're, you're starting lower level you start with the, the splatter shot junior and you just need to aim in in that big area and then as you go forward and and you improve you can start picking up the the splatter shot and then you're gonna have a smaller area more precise aiming and bit by bit you can go to the splash basically yeah um just just go forward with the weapons uh, in order um so we have this next uh replay whoop, right here replay from RD with uh, the stringer on Brinewater Splat Zones. That's an interesting uh, thing. I definitely. Oh, is that how you pronounce it? I thought it was oh. Rudy. Rudy? I say I say RD. I guess it do it doesn't matter. It's not pronounceable. It's R D Y. Um. Maybe it's ready. It's ready. It's all ready. Um, so I do, I do, ooh, I, I saw two stringers, um, it has the toxic mist and it can throw two of them, and since you do have, I think, two stringers, you can pretty much cover the whole zone. Uh, you also have an e-leader, pretty much the junior is gonna need to absolutely play defense there for you. Um, just like paint at your feet, start putting bubbles to protect you. Uh, I don't know why you drop down. But I guess I guess the stringer is more mobile, so that's fine. They have three bubblers though, and also walls and a booyah bomb. Uh, so that's gonna I be pain. I think dropping down's okay because you have two tri stringers and one e leader on your team. Like you have too much anchor, so I think taking advantage of the tri stringer's mobility and trying to play a little more aggressively to make up for the weaknesses in the comp, I think that's okay. I mean. I guess, I, but I guess what I would do though is instead of dropping down, because really I don't think that was providing a good uh, like uh, hitting angle, I would probably just start moving up forward, right? The only person that really should be taking uh, an angle like this is the junior. And what I would honestly do pretty much is just have the, the three, um, basically Elyar stands on the back on the ledge, then the, the two stringers can be kind of more forward, they're still on the main path, and then the junior is on the zone. And all three of the backliners can just like provide paint support for the junior as it's fighting down below. And also the toxic mist. You definitely want to use your toxic mist a lot because they're going to have bubblers, they're going to have protection. You you want to throw a toxic mist towards the bubbler to, to make it safe to stay in the bubbler, but also annoying and not very helpful. Um, and then the, the junior can just do its own thing and, and place its one bubbler on the zone. Because right, if it has bubbler, it has the splat bombs. It can stay on the zone pretty comfortably, right? It, it if it ever gets pressured, you have the toxic mist uh, on your team that should be able to assist him uh, whenever he stands on the zone. Just focus on painting towards your junior and on the zone. Use your toxic mist a lot too. It's very important. It's very important at slowing down the enemies because they have faster moving weapons than you. Like here, I would throw a toxic mist to prevent them from coming up too close on me. Yeah, I would do that too, make them make them just a little more scared of the I mean, It's not necessarily like being scared, because it's not like it's very scary to come up to a toxic mist. It's just like annoying. Fair. <laughs> like you, you can see, like it can definitely tank. Like throwing the toxic mist is not something that. Oh, okay, they're they're in the toxic mist. I can fight them now. No, that's definitely not how it works. It's like, during the Toxic Mist, I can back off now. I can, like, let them be annoyed. And uh, you, you better hope that whenever you throw Toxic Mist at the enemies, you have a teammate to assist you with actually killing them. Because uh, there you you were dead anyways, Toxic Mist or not. Uh, definitely too close to drop, to drop there. Toxic Mist, okay, good. You don't have an escape route. You're going too far in. No escape routes. You had it teammate to assist but it's still kind yeah, of funky yeah. you have kilo whales everywhere you're playing too close range for a tri stringer i do i do get that you don't have lots of close range options 
Also, maybe it was the score. Maybe it was the score. I'm not taking a look at the yeah, score now. I think it was the score, and then they just got stuck in mid, but I think, ooh, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. probably could back up at some point. Starting to get crowded there. You don't really have any escape routes. Because it's... Uh, you're getting kills though. I don't know how you managed to get them. But yeah, the thing is, is like, it's a, the tri stringer is still a pretty slow weapon. It's not like you have fast reaction times, and you don't want to end up in the same situation as the person in, in my last VOD review, where they had the um, they had the uh, the pencil charger, the 5H, and basically they they tried to fight a close range shooter. Or was it a bucket? I, I forgot. Oh, but not, uh, basically, they spent 30 seconds trying to escape and doing a parkour sequence, and they didn't have enough time to charge a shot and actually get some kills. They were just struggling for nothing. It's, uh, <laughs> that was an interesting... Very, some very interesting plays. And I'm not used to seeing mm. that kind of play. Seems to be working kind of okay. Though it definitely like getting that close to the roller as you did. Like you're a stringer, they're a roller. If if somebody tries to shoot at one another, they're gonna be the ones to win. It, the positions you're taking are very awkward, but I, I I do guess you were trying to compensate for your team composition. But just it, still keep in mind that even though you're trying to compensate, you're you're not going to be able to be another weapon that you actually are. You're not a a, a shooter. You're not a, a splatter shot, and you're definitely not a roller. So if, if you're coming that close to a roller, you're asking to get to to get killed. Even though you tox you they're in your toxic mist. That doesn't prevent them from splatting you. It, you're still gonna get killed. Um, I, I probably would have used more, uh, like single shots. Like, like there's two, two stages of charge for a tri string. If you charge it one stage, then you get just a, a flurry of bombs. And I find that pretty good for securing the zone and also, I mean that, that's more like what it. What I was saying about toxic mist and the, the, bombs are scarier. Quite a few times the half charges. Yeah. That Especially said, the... I know I know Rudy has like a thousand games on tri stringer, so <laughs> I feel like, like they have a reason for not going with single charge shots. Uh huh. They 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 got 15 kills why. by the way, which is the most out of the whole lobby. So this is definitely interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> pretty sketchy though. I I, I don't know if uh, that's consistent. If if it's like a magically it's a lucky game, uh, because it doesn't feel to me like this is something you could consistently get by just like coming up to a roller and just killing them. Just just like that. Yeah. Just, it works. <laughs> I I don't think that's something you can pull off consistently. So definitely mind that and um, uh, yeah, stay safer. You're not you're not a splash shot. Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's, okay, so this was, um, along with the code they sent, Tristringer is a frontliner.mov, uh, as, oh. as the title. So that, that's why, that's why it was funny, that's why it was funny. Okay, we have one more game from one Mario Bro, and then we can move on to Big Man's game. So let's check this one. Uh, okay, it is from Mario Link. Hagglefish Market on tower control with the splatter shot. They've got Ninja Squid. Ooh. I really want that shirt. Ninja Squid with three subs of swim speed. Uh, so this is... Uh, I don't know what it is. But let's check it. Doctor. Brush, dynamo, okay. Pretty the range is pretty pretty short apart from the from the 52. It's pretty short. You guys oh have the dynamo, <laughs> the octobrush, the splatter shot, pretty 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 average range, whereas they got slightly slower, like shorter range, I would say. Just don't let them get too close. Am I looking at the correct person? Yes, it's a splatter shot. Um 
have the suction bombs and the and the special that is called the try something. Trizuka. Trizuka, yes. <laughs> Uh, got the two kills. You got the advantage. Don't, don't. Okay, this you can't escape there. You can't escape. If you're going forward, you need to get a kill or just die. And if you die, then you you have. You need to paint more. Just like getting kills is one thing, but being safe. You know, like I often see good good players, pro players, stuff like this on on their videos, on their replays. What they usually do is they're they're gonna be able to stay in a fight with someone by just shooting at them for very very long and both of them are not gonna die they're just gonna shoot at each other until like someone like makes a small mistake and just ends up dying okay, you definitely want to get off now Ooh, especially because of the roller but yeah they're just gonna stay in the fight for very long and it's just gonna be like tiptoeing back and forth until someone makes a mistake and they die and and here the thing is like you already made a mistake by not painting your back so if you tiptoe back and forth, well, you can only tiptoe forth and not back because you don't have an escape route. So that's the thing. O always prioritize defense over attack. Attack is one thing, but if it fails and you don't have a way to back out of it, uh, you're screwed, basically. The best attack is a good defense. And that, that's like, that's real pro logic right there, right? Because FLC that Squid School talks about. The, he says that anchor is the most important role. And the anchor's role is to not die. And I, th I think the reason is that in Splatoon, if you're not dead, you can paint. Well, yeah, exactly. And like, paint is everything. Paint is attack, it's defense, it's it's yeah. everything. And just like, being alive allows you to put more paint, and the paint allows you to do everything. So, if you want more paints and do everything, you need to be alive, and if you want to be alive, you just need to focus more on defense than attack. So, yes, the, the math checks out. Same here, like, how are you gonna escape? You're gonna need to do some small jumps, not a lot of ink. See, like, you're moving forward, what are you gonna do there? You're gonna get painted over, you can't escape. It's very, very messy. You, you don't, you don't want to be messy, right? Especially, like, take it from me, I'm, I'm a maniac, I don't like to get dirty. You don't want to be in a messy ink pool. You want to have your ink color all around yourself. I think See, like, some look, look at how that little splotch of ink, ink, like that micro mi microscopic splotch of ink, just prevented you from jumping there. It was it was just such a tiny amount of ink, yet like the the tiniest splotch can just like cancel, uh, like make you waste freaking five seconds. Like look at this. Look, look at this. You can't jump. You can't jump. You wasted five seconds. Just because of a little splotch of ink. So it does matter. Ink does matter. Pretty good. Okay, you got nearly a wipeout. You good push on the tower. I wonder if ink resistance allows you to make that jump. Mm, okay, so I, I do know that ink resistance, um, it does slow down the time, like, uh, how much damage you take over time by standing in ink, but it also um, delays the first time where you, you get damage, basically. So you can stand in ink yeah. for a few more milliseconds before starting to get damage. So if you would have jumped, like, very soon after stepping into enemy ink, it would have been if, as if you didn't touch the enemy yet. I sometimes I, I sometimes put on a full main of ink resistance just because I hate it when that exact thing happens to me where this tiny little piece of blue I can't jump. Oh, it's a blue. I do think yeah, even even one sub could probably help with this. I, I don't know the exact stats, but like you know, for example, some abilities like super jump, uh, like in super jump, they like just having one sub increases the thing with the most ma massive increase basically, and then. Everything yeah. else is like a little bit less, more and more. Like the first one, like you have a little curve, right, that goes down and gives you less and less power for your for your ability points that you put on. But then the first one is like it doesn't follow the curve. It's like way more for some reason. Uh, so definitely look that up on the wiki on uh, uh, inkipedia.com.net. I forgot this one. It's the best wiki, by the way. Don't look at other other wikis like fandom.com this is bad just look at inkypedia it's it's actual fire 
Um, so how's the thing going? You definitely need to stop that push. You have two people, they have three people. You need to react fast. You need to kill people on the tower. Don't focus on the first one. Okay, that was close, but you definitely focused on the wrong person there. You needed to focus on the tower and killing anyone that would have been on there, not the person that was down below. Yeah, I think even just jumping onto the tower is probably the right play because that yeah, stops so the tower from moving. And at, at two points left, oh my gosh, that was close. You gotta stop that tower from moving. That is actually something I, I don't consider often, but it, it is very like smart to do, like just get on the tower. Especially if yeah. you have a weapon like uh, like you have here, the splatter shot, which is pretty good at, at tower play. I feel like yeah, back in definitely. Season 2, I, I was better at, at tower play, and I just kind of like forgot how to do it uh, as I guys I kept playing because I did. That's one thing I I very much tried to do in Splatoon 2. I learned to stop focusing on the objective. Didn't didn't go for the tower. Didn't go for anything. Just went for kills around the tower. Just just did support slash skirmisher slash uh, killing. Um, but if you, if you're pretty good at the tower, just get on it. It'll stop the tower. It's good. It's good. It, it's definitely something I personally need to work on that i think uh, um boflo in the chat said project playtime was announced to come out on monday what is project playtime it's probably a horror game for kids um it, it sounds like it i'm all right i'm gonna look uh, okay so now the game that we're gonna do is from a big man hello big man are you still in uh, the voice chat big man Sorry, I'm muted. Hey, there you are. No. So, it is on Mahi Mahi Splat Zones with a tent attack. Um, interesting gear I'm seeing. You are using uh, Thermalink. Yeah, my yeah. gear build was not done yet. Okay, are you getting anything out of your Thermalink currently? Or, or are you no, trying to swap fine. it out? Okay. I'm not getting anything out of it. So, let's check it. Mahi Mahi Splats. Mm-hmm. Game in game is run. <laughs> so you have a sniper and otherwise pretty short range. They do have mm, slightly more range. Uh splat zone. Pretty good movements. Uh me mechanically speaking, I mean. What rank are you, big man? I'm A minus right now. I was. Oh yeah, I was still A minus. This was post chill season. Okay. Ouch. I definitely feel to me like you're uh, getting like approaching too much from the. Oh, okay. Um, thing is like you were facing that guy. If he wasn't gonna fall in the water, uh, you were gonna get killed there because they. I forgot which weapon it was. It was probably the pro. They had more range, and they, it it felt like you wouldn't win that interaction. Ouch! Surprised I did, to be honest. That one. Okay, so they have the advantage, numbers advantage. You have more score uh, if you manage to stop them. I don't know if a super jump there is. Okay, it wasn't too far. Well, if you're super, if you're gonna super jump that close, especially on mahi mahi, you're not gonna have really opportunity to jump that far. Um, you really don't need to jump at all on Mahi Mahi. Except yeah, if you gotta think, wipe out and they're in, in mid. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Jumping on Mahi Mahi is a little sketch, I think. Um, it's not you, great. With the tent attack, you do have the Splat Bomb and also the Tri Strike. So you could totally stay up on the ledge you were on earlier and just spam the Splat Bombs and the Tri Strikes whenever you have them. Also something else, you, you do currently have the strike strike and you're not using it. As soon as you have special, I would just advise using it before you die. Because if you die, that's one special less that you can put on to have pressure on the map. And it, it doesn't matter if it's not the best use, because the worst use, uh, the, the worst way to use your special is to not use it at all, basically. Um, and you don't want to risk wasting it. Yeah, even, even though the zone's already painted there, I think using tri strike to just deter the enemy for a couple more yeah. seconds and you, and you can just like throw them even farther basically yeah yeah you're, you're throwing more into the the base especially with the choke points on mahi mahi tri strike can really shut down mm -hmm. the enemy's approach options and just give you a little more points 
Yep. And also one thing I saw earlier is that you were getting on the zone, basically. Like, you were trying to paint the zone while being directly on it, instead of, like, standing behind it and painting forward, right? And, and standing at, at range. Because if someone tries to engage you and they paint over you, you have no way to escape. Because you're, you're currently trying to, to struggle to paint your feet where you are. So I would just stand a little bit uh, uh, in the back, paint over the zone. And just have them, you know, paint the zone along with you. You're both gonna paint the zone, right? At range, not directly on the zone, but both painting the zone, both getting painting for your specials. And basically, it's gonna be a battle of who reacts faster and who uses their specials better. Um, just, just focus on staying more safe, on painting more, and using your special as soon as you can. You, you don't want to get on the zone if it's not painted already, and you, you, it's. Like, the best way, if you do want to pressure and go forward and go towards the zone, is to have your tri-strike out while you're doing that. So here, yes, you're pressuring, good, now you can move forward. To be fair, in Mahi Mahi, 33% of the map is the zone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here, like, per personally, I think you stayed for a bit too long um, in the fight in the back here. I mean, here you're moving back, so this is good. I would just, you know, I would know when it's my time to get out, when enemies are probably already respawning, when they're gonna get back to into play, and when I want to start getting out. I don't want to be facing my back against the enemy's base for too long, basically. You do have pretty good okay. movement, though. Okay. I think I disagree a little bit. I, I liked staying in that fight that you had in, in the corner there, just because you were in a pretty advantageous position. And yeah, it's just, it's just a tip in general. Curly was like, just pretty good at moving around you. And then also keep in mind that there's some delay, so maybe we're not talking about the exact same moments, but like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, like, facing towards the... you're back towards the enemy's base for too long, you're, like, basically you're asking to get shot at some point. Um, from uh, uh, one of the enemies that just respawned. Especially on this map, because again, it's small and the enemies are always going to be respawning at any given time. And also, one other thing I could su uh, suggest, I mean, that I'm noticing, I mean, um, you do have some pretty good movements, some pretty good mechanical skill, uh, but I do feel like you're uh, relying too much on the fact that enemies don't have that good mechanical skill to like go around them, kind of dodge them while being in front of them, right? Like even if you're in a one-on-one -on -one fight and you're both like facing each other, since you have better mechanical skill, you can you, you're assuming that you're going to be able to to go around them and hit them from behind and win that encounter, which is not necessarily going to apply in the future. Um, so you definitely want to watch your paint around yourself more. And don't get into too much enemy ink or stand for too long with uh, the enemies behind your back and stuff like this. Just pay more attention. Be more attentive. Don't rely on your skills too much, on your mechanical skills. Try to learn a bit of game sense of, of how the, the game flows, uh, how the game modes need to be played, what to prioritize, etc. All right. Yeah, I think, I think the movement was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, it, just about as good as I can do. So I can't say much to improve on that. Uh, I wonder if there would be some merit in being a little more aggressive, uh, especially on this map. Um, I think in like around the four minute mark, you guys had a pretty good paint control in mid. I think maybe you want to take the opportunity to go and harass them in their base to stall for more time. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the time to where you want to start being aggressive. Yeah. Especially with being a splatter shot, like, yeah, you are, you are an aggressive weapon. That's my job. Yeah. Just again, the main tip is like, for now, your mechanical skill advantage works, but as soon as you start hitting like higher ranks or like fighting against players who do have the same mechanical skill, those fights are probably going to be trades or like l losses. So you do want to rely on other stuff rather than just this. Um, okay. Eventually, just start 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 learning other ways to have an advantage in the match. Mm, da -da -da. Thank, thank you. you. No problem. And thank you for sending the replay. Welcome.
Goodbye. How could I have won this match? Okay, so let me check See ya. next yeah. next replay. Welcome back. No bye bye. <laughs> From Power F again, uh, with the Range Blaster on Surgeon Tower Control. Let's go. CGG Twit said you can also destroy the Wave Breaker by shooting at the ball. Yep. Is it the ball specifically? I thought just shooting at the wave breaker. Just, just anywhere works. Yeah. Oh, unless he's referring to, like, you know how the the ball kind of goes out of the body. I wonder if while it's outside of the body, you can shoot at it, and like the hitbox raises and lowers a little bit. I don't know. Uh, so Sturgeon tower control and uh, with the range blaster from Pogriff again. Well, anyways, I started blasting. Oh, they have two range blasters. A flingza, two flingzas. Okay. Is this a new team? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it might be. <laughs> you never know with this that... matchmaking. Yeah. This could this um... could be open. So we're playing on tower control. Okay, good. Pretty good. Like, you're not getting too much in danger, you're not getting too close for now. Seems like you're kind of moving too close there. Especially against the two other range blasters, right? They're going to be able to do the same stuff as you do. So, you you can't expect to do the same stuff as they are doing and win this, because they're too doing that stuff, right? They, they can, like, shoot you from range from two different angles. Uh, you do want to be... stay more safe. And be extra sneaky with them. Yeah, um, yeah you, gotta rely on your sneak. you do have a Clash Blaster, a Sculpture, and also the Bubbler from the Junior. Um, we probably have at least a teammate near you, because they, they're all pretty good, pretty competent at close range, whereas you will struggle more with this. So we definitely have at least a stick close to one of them. Because you, you'll need their assistance, especially on, on this map, I think. Because um, the sight lines are kind of more awkward. Like, right, if you want to hit above the, the platform here, you need to get on it, kind of. You don't have easy routes, easy clean routes to travel. So you do want to have a teammate painting for you, uh, just assisting you if someone gets close to you. Because see, that's the thing, like, I, I think also you're not looking too much around yourself. Like, somebody could have um, came at you from the left side. And so if someone comes at you from the left yeah. side because uh, it's painting their color, what are you going to do? You can't really shoot at them because there's a sort of little ledge. So it's... it's and, and that's the thing, like, you have heights. It's, it's kind of hard to try to hit them without hitting the ground. First, which is going to make the explosion do less damage, uh, be less, uh, have less of a radius. It's going to be hard. You, you do want to stick close to your teammates. Ouch. Probably got too close there. Uh, one, I guess, I guess a little tip I could give is if you stand on that little platform there, you can basically be a, a like, off-brand uh, e-leader. And just like pressure that zone, right? If you do want to, like the class blaster, I know it, it could get like right below that center platform and start just firing up, and basically I know the whole platform. Uh, you can do that from a bit farther, from example, for, from this ramp. You definitely want to mind your range. Why are you here? You definitely want to stand at the at your maximum range. You never want to get closer to your range. That's that's one thing just with blasters in general. Um, the thing with shooters is that as long as you're in the range, you can get like as close as you want and it's still gonna work just as great, even better actually. The thing with blasters, it's it's kind of like weirder. If you're too far, just like shooters, it's not gonna work. If you're at the correct range, it's gonna start working. And if you're too close, the shooters are gonna work better and you're gonna work worse. So you wanna be at that perfect sweet spot range. Never wanna get too close, never wanna get too far back. Here you're too close, you want to get back, you want to get up there. Because here like you shot way too many times and you didn't get enough 
people off the tar. Uh, you're getting too close. And and yeah, okay, so remember what I'm what I keep saying about like having escape routes and stuff like this? This is especially important when you're playing a blaster. Because the blaster needs to be at the exact correct range. And if you don't have enough paint around yourself to, to move make micro adjustments to your position and be at the exact correct range, then your weapon is useless. So it's especially important to make sure that everything is painted around yourself and that you're safe when you're playing the blaster. Especially the range blaster. Especially important because your weapon just can't paint that well, so you can't create an escape route for yourself if you need it. You have yeah. the escape it, route it, already has to be there. It, it can well, you can create it ahead of not. time, but you can't like you can't run very fast. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, it, that so it, it doesn't paint enough for itself. It can definitely like you know with with just like two or three shots, it can paint the whole ramp. Uh, like uh, in, in a vertical, I mean in a straight right. line, which allows it to go back and forth, like back and forward, uh, which is good enough basically for, for its game plan. Um, but it's definitely yeah. not going to be able to put like as much paint as the other weapons. So yes, it's it's always better to have another person near you. But it's not like it, ca yeah, it can't yeah. do, it can't paint. Every weapon can paint good enough. Right. Mostly, mostly. I'm more referring to how like if somebody starts shooting at you. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to splat you before you have the chance to paint and escape. At I, least, I, I, I mean, do, yeah. that's my that's just my opinion of Range Blaster. I don't like Range Blaster. I have a really hard time using that weapon, so I might be a little yeah. biased. Cause, and and I, I do hear what you're saying about, like, if, if somebody do, does start shooting at you, then you're probably going to die because you don't have... Like, that's the thing. It does paint pretty good like somewhat like medium goodness of painting i would say only if you are in a calm situation right if, let's say you yeah. get pressured yeah, yeah, while you have the splatter shot let me actually activate the little robot thing a whoop turn on copy machine so let's say they're, they're painting up okay you're right there they're shooting at you you're trying to escape you can paint at your feet and just start escaping right um and also if you just want to paint like normally it does I mean, it does print pretty okay now, let's say that you have the blaster, range blaster specifically, which is right here at the end because it's one of my least used weapons. Um, <laughs> so if, if you do paint like this, right, like three shots, maybe two, you do have enough to go forward and back, right? You're, you're like boom and boom. This is enough for you to go, uh, to be at the correct range basically to, to shoot at them. And as you keep firing at them, you know, you're just gonna have even more paint eventually. And this is good enough to like find your correct range and start hitting them and if they ever like get you you should have enough paint back that you can escape so it's definitely it can paint for itself pretty okay especially because it paints in a line if, if your weapon can paint in a line it's already pretty good at, at painting in general i would say um but then the issue is that if you're getting shot at you like the amount of paint that you're gonna get by firing forward at your feet is not going to be that much because uh, it mainly paints forward so let me let me just get out like it doesn't paint that good at your feet right if you're getting shot at that little splotch of paint is just going to get instantly deleted if you do paint like this um, it doesn't paint as good either and and your next shot is going to be too like you can't escape if you're here you like escaping you can't escape you're dead so y instead of that's probably why you don't necessarily like the blasters too much because you need to have s more game sense right it's very much easier to get kills you have more range you can hit behind cover and stuff like this but you can't react as fast so you need to instead of reaction um instead of reacting you need to predict you need to plan yeah. ahead you need to have so like that's what i was saying like it can paint good but it can't paint fast on reaction so you need to paint yeah in advance That's and you need to too. like paint your back while you're still safe and if you do want to push up and like play more riskily then you do want to have a teammate near you um because you you if you push up and you don't have paints and you don't have a teammate then you're dead that's just how it is there's no in between um so next code Ooh, too many too many notifications so we've done the streaming game, we've got the splash shot, we've got the big man game, we've got the... What could have, have 
how could I have won this match? What are my what are my weaknesses and what did I do wrong? Okay, and then we have I think uh, a few more games. Those are the last games, and they're all from uh, RD, was it? And I think those were all stringers. We have one, two, three, four, five, which they had like specific things they wanted to showcase in each of them. And that's specifically why I wanted to check them, because I do want to look at some valid strats and and learn from them. So let me, oop, VOD review there, oop, 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 oop. we take the thing, we take the notes. Whoop, I'm in the window on the side. And I'm picking up the code. So first code from Artie. I gotta say, I gotta say how I love how your view replays overlay, it fades in. Yeah, so, that yeah. <laughs> it's so subtle, but it's a really nice touch. Okay. Um so this one is on Brinewater Splat Zones, so the same as before. Um The Victory, okay, overall splat was that the same game actually? I don't know. We'll have to I mean we'll see if it's the same. Then we have this one. Do -do 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 Download. Then we'll read the tips, the tips as we go into the games. That way, it's, we're we're gonna have some context for what we're reading. Okay, uh, this one. Okay, this is good. Uh, now that we've got all the replay codes, we can start downloading them. Oh, ah, I hit the wrong button. I hate this. I hate this. What is it? No, I don't. I don't want you, Cortana. Get away. Code. Are you okay? This one. So we had. One, two, three, four, five. This one is not from RD, correct? It doesn't even work. Okay, good. Okay. Go download. Please do not click the wrong button. Sorry for the delay. No worries from me. Oh, by the way, have you have you seen like the um, the stream countdown with the um, with the big run skybox? I did see I did that. that. Pretty cool. I do have another yeah. one, and I, I also have like I, two. I like the stream countdown too. It's it always looks really good. Nice. I have that like one more for natural. big run, and I have uh, two for um, the splat test at nighttime. I also have one for the daytime and and for uh, sunset, which I've already posted on YouTube. The other ones are coming soon. Um, so, okay, we got Brian Rider Springs. Which one was that? Uh, it wasn't the same game as before. Okay, so let's check it. They're saying... Um, uh, so, and if you want, here's some replays from me. If you want to see them, oh, there's no need to review unless you want to. I've already picked at my own mistakes. Well, we're still looking at them. If you want to learn. Um, a lot of difficulties in this match uh, came from how passive my team comp was, so I ended up putting myself pretty far forward, I capitalized on the fact that I never got flanked or addressed from my position, see how quickly I responded to the few times someone was on the flank, also see how I kept myself near or around cover when I was in close range fights. Okay, so I do see that there's a blob, tri stringer and, uh, and uh, an explosher, which is, yeah, pretty passive. As he's saying. Um, so you hear only the slower weapons are left alive. So basically it's like shoot at them once, just scare them and let them go back. You don't need to go for it. And yeah, he was mentioning that nobody really uses that flank. So yeah, as long as you look at the map, um, like, often enough, and you, where is, okay, as long as you look at the map often enough, and you still see that the, um, 
that the flanks are not getting covered in enemy ink, then it's pretty good. And just in general, for the people that don't really watch flanks, I would say, like, you look at your map, like, kind of uh, regularly. If you see some enemy ink in there, then it's probably they're, they're using the flank, right? And if, if they have already inked there and used the flank, then you do want to cover it back up, basically. Because that way, if they ever try to use the flank again, instead of not needing to paint over it uh, and basically using the flank silently, they'll need to paint over your ink again. So you, you'll have a notice, a short notice that they're using the flank again before they're, they're actually going to get to you. That was a sticky situation right there. I liked the Toxic Mist and the Killer Whale. I don't know if dropping was the right call, though. Yeah. If you can imagine what happened in the past. I, I, I do question, though, because they're saying that since their comp is pretty passive, they tried to play more aggressive. But my question is, what if everybody was just standing on the ledge and, and like, the three, the three backliners were just, like, putting down massive amounts of paint on the zone at all times, right? And if someone tries to come up on the on the um, on the ramp up to the base, right? The on your side of the of the base, you can just start firing toward them, especially with the explosher and the tri stringer. I definitely feel like that would be enough firepower slash dissuasion to prevent them from coming. So they're they're mainly gonna stick to the zone. And as they stick to the zone you you're just gonna have like more firepower at range to hit the zone so I just wonder how the game would have gone if you all just stuck to up there would it would it have been able to work because yeah you're dropping down instantly you're not you're not really ever trying to stay up here I'm really just curious can it work But I do like the fact that you use like different angles to use your floor rail from. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Might be, it would be kind of interesting to play against. Like, oh no, I'm getting shot at a tri stringer. I better back up. Wait, they're behind me? <laughs> I mean, true, yeah. And I guess if you've got enough uh, angles covered, then it's also definitely uh, a plus to, to be had. Like if the blob lover is firing from, um, I guess just the explosher from forward, the blob lover from the same position can fire from another angle because of the, the wall bounces, and then you can just be in another place. And then you, you just have basically three backliners firing from all directions, and that's gonna be annoying. I do like how they're, yeah taking different positions and always rotating to somewhere else, making it hard to, for the enemy team to predict where the gunfire is going to come from. I, I do see how it's pretty useful uh, to have uh, the thermal ink there, because you could have totally seen the the Nautilus oh, charge yeah. behind the cover. <laughs> like, you can actually see their yeah. charge timings. You know exactly when they're going to peek out. Which de definitely helps if you do want to get... Oh, very nice use of toxic mist there to, to watch the flank. I, I do like the fact that you have toxic mist and also your um, your ability of thermalink allows you to basically go forward a bit more. Like for that playstyle where you're getting more risky, at least you have more intel on where the enemies are at. And you, you slow down their movement to match your slower weapon. So basically... You, you can kind of work like this by being more close range. Okay. And we have uh, the next game, which was on the Hammerhead Bridge on Splat Zones again. We also have Tower Control, Clown Blitz, and this one, I don't know what it is, but pretty much a bit of everything. Okay, so on Bridge, Splat Zones. Mm -hmm. Let's go. They're saying, a good example of safe, aggressive. I wish I could have found an opportunity to push further up, but I was close enough to draw some fire, but really in serious danger of being splatted, which helped some of my team pop off fast and decisive. Okay. 
so yeah, in the team you have an L3, a Pro, and a um, Aerospray, which are pretty good weapons as long as they've got uh, ways to move up. We have Trash Ringer, Splash, the Junior, and the EV Leader. The, the uh, Charger, I mean. Okay. I definitely notice how whenever there's a wave breaker, you're not necessarily jumping. You're just uh, you're priority prioritizing the fact of, of keeping your feet underground to charge faster and get more shots out, even though you take a bit of damage. Because I assume since you're since you can stay at a bit more range, you don't really it doesn't matter if you get some damage because you're gonna you're gonna be able to back off and heal that up at some point as long as you don't get hit by the three shots. Or maybe that's just a, a reflex you don't already have, and maybe maybe it's just like you're actually gonna learn to do that. I don't know, but it seems like it's intended there. Because yeah, that that's a thing with the tri stringer since it it can only charge uh, good on the on the ground. Like if you if you're jumping like a splatter shot would or a, another shooter weapon. Then you can't really like jump to avoid the wave breaker and then also shoot at the same time uh, to defend yourself. Oh wait, you guys already won. That was fast. Can can Tri Striker really snipe the the head of an inkling on a crab tank? Yes. Huh. Like a, I saw shots hitting the tank, but. Inkling was not dying, so part of me was thinking well, yeah, maybe you, you should be staying safe aim. instead of giving away your position. But, uh, I often do that with the hammer. Whenever I have hammer, uh, when I play the sploosh or the or the um, or the mini splatling, my hammer is basically my my uh, hard counter to crabs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like crab. Let me snipe you real quick. Um. So next game is on uh, Scourge Gorge Tower Control with the Trash Ringer. That's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Scorch you do have pretty good painting power though. So it's good at covering the, the massive amount of space that you have on, on the ground because it's an open map. I was gonna say that mm, it's been a while since I've played on, on, uh, on Scourge Gorge. Uh, I haven't seen that map in a while, and then I just realized, oh, because I'm not playing the, the online game that much recently, because I'm only playing like Sabin Run and doing VOD reviews, <laughs> and also playing like a friggin' um, Pokémon tournament. Um, I downloaded a, a, a game trial for that when it came out, but I am not good at fighting games. <laughs> yeah, I, I was so. It so was I, hard. I, I picked up Gardevoir, and that's the only character I've really played. And uh, and then I was like, oh, I love this game. The, the thing is, I tried it just at the end of the trial. I had like so much time, and I, I, I think it was a week, but I only ended up playing it like one day and a half, and I just ran it so much, and I loved it, so I just ended up buying it. That's how they get you. Yeah, because I mean, it, I, I had other options like, like Xenoblade or whatever. And I was like, this is a fighting game. I could play that for lots of time. And I think I already have like 200 yeah. hours uh, just just like that, just just by playing casually. Wow. Um, so this game, what are they saying? Every time I got a wipeout, I, I immediately moved up to the next checkpoint to slow the enemy team down. We struggled breaking that checkpoint due to our comp, but we held it for the most of the match. Uh, never giving the enemy much of a chance to win. Okay. So let's see, I assume lots of toxic misuses. Already got a little bit of an advantage. Uh, not much more than the enemy though. But again, it's all about defense and constant pressure. Mm, that was a lot of pink to escape. Yep.
So I, I do think like one cool thing about the Tri-Stringer, I, I feel like, and one of the reasons why I feel like they're not caring as much about the pain on the ground to escape is that like since you're gonna spend most of your time just walking around when you charge, uh, um, you're not gonna be in your ring that much. Because being in your ink means you can't really charge. Um, so you're not gonna need ink as much to escape, to, to swim away. Yeah. Like you're like if you do need to swim away, that's gonna be something you can plan. It, it's I, I feel like you can stand in in dangerous ink as long as you provide uh, additional fire to support your teammates. And then whenever you see a teammate like uh, enemies. Uh, come closer to you because since you have some range you're gonna be able to see the enemies from farther while they arrive on you so you're gonna have time to predict when they come and start thinking behind you to escape it's like sometimes you know what whenever yeah. I play e-leader I know I don't necessarily focus on covering my feet like if some enemies came close to me and then one of my teammates uh, killed them but they had time to paint a bit on my feet and I'm just charging my shot to fire towards the enemies I don't care if I'm currently sitting in enemy ink. Uh, as long as I have my short charge and ink towards the enemies, whenever I'll, I'll, I'll fire it, I'll just, my feet are going to be painted, right? So it doesn't matter whether or not it, it, they are currently painted, because I'm not going to be moving, and I am not. Um, I don't necessarily need to escape that much. I'm not under pressure. The, this yeah, weapon exactly. can move a if bit more. If you're the anchor, nobody's going to be shaking you. Yep. This weapon can move a bit more, but since it's walking, like, you really... You, you don't want to be on enemy ink, that's for sure, but, like, you can have just a, just a little bit of, of your paint. You don't need that much, as long as you can strafe around and be more mobile to evade shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can actually... You can get out of sticky situations decently okay as a tracer. That's part of why I like it. Um, it paints... Quickly, okay, and then uh, Toxic Mist is really good for slowing down an enemy's approach and giving you time to breathe. I think, I think, out of all the weapons that have Toxic Mist, Tri String makes the best use out of it. And uh, yeah, one thing I'm noticing is like how earlier they were just like there was a bomb close to them, and they didn't really it, it feel the need to get that far away. They they could take a little like chip damage, and same thing I'm noticing here. It's like when they're yeah. strafing around, they, they're not afraid of just like stepping into enemy ink. Because that's that's the thing actually. Whenever you're swimming fast in, in the ink, uh, if you hit a splotch of enemy ink, you're just gonna stop. Uh, it's just gonna stop your momentum. But here, if you're walking, whenever you start stepping into enemy ink, you're not you're not slowing down instantly. So you do have some leeway actually, which is pretty interesting. Pretty pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I are they even running uh, any sort of gear that has um, ink resistance? I do That's see them question. running. No, they're not running it. Um, though I do think that would <laughs> pretty much complement the the gameplay a lot. I don't, I don't I don't think they're running any specific gear though. Apart from the from the main of uh, I mean they have LDE run speed and then the the thermal ink. So I do think that's intended. Um, maybe if you do have some chunks, if you want to customize, maybe consider um, some ink ink resistance. Yes, that's the name. Uh, next one, next one. Uh, boom, play. So let's check what they're saying. It's an Inkblot Clam Blitz. I am particularly proud of this match because it was rough. It was a rough match, but the decision making at the end was some of the best aggression and confidence I've ever had. I didn't have any good Rainmaker replay, sadly. My recent history is mostly tower control and splat zones right now. Okay. So decision making. Yeah, I'm interested at the end. to see this because I have a hard time using tri stringer on maps that aren't splat zones or tower control. Clamblitz feels too fast. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's, it's faster or slower because because um it. The, the, the speed of the game is still going to be the same. Like, the game is still going to play at the same speed. It's mainly just that on splat zones and power control, you have a single spot to focus on, and it feels easier to do that with... I mean, I guess it would be the same with an E-leader. If you have one spot to fire at with the E-leader, that gives you 
an easier time hitting the one shot, right? And, and doing your job correctly. Here, it's like, you have so many options of where to paint and who to kill in which spot of the map and who's gonna like flank you on which side because there's no clear objective um so it's, it's just harder to play the weapon in general it's, it's just too many options i would say not necessarily the speed of the game good, good job reacting to your uh, allies death right there noticing that and to move in Ouch. And yeah, as, as they were saying in, in their comment, they were saying that um, the match was rough. So yeah, we can see that. And they said that they're proud of it because of the decision making at the end. And that 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 also like kind of goes along with what I was saying about like you have too many choices. And that that's one thing. Like I see them chilling in the back, basically, trying to assist. Um, and I feel like basically what's going to happen in the end, they're just going to like... Think of a plan and just execute it, whichever it, it ends up being, and it's just gonna work because they're gonna be more proactive, basically. Mm -hmm. Nice shot. So, what are your team comes by the way? We have some, we have the sculpture, they also have pretty, pretty equal range, but you do have the upper hand on the enemy team. So, yeah, if you, if you do start making some some decision making some plays whichever if you, if you start pressing your range advantage slash the fact that you can hit above cover um then you can definitely turn this fight around mm. i wonder if the toxic mist could help there how many can can can, hold on, can people actually come through the room yes they can uh, we go back to... Oh. It feels kind of weird though, because like you were focusing on the on the ramp, where then when there was uh, one of your teammates fighting uh, on your right side, and you didn't really pain for them or assist them. That was kind of weird. Like you'd have, you could have probably thrown a toxic mist towards them. I do see that you're using the toxic mist, like, um, you throw it on yourself um, to basically have a little time to escape. But the question is, like, you, would you really need to escape if you were not jumping down in the first place? I figure. Because I do remember, like, um, reviewing some games from other tri-stringers. Tri and they would they would usually do much better if they were, for example, on Eel Hill. You have the little the little uh, bridge thing, and if you stay on it, you would have a much better chance of actually doing having an impact, uh, especially on games like Splat Zones. Because yeah, he, here like just you're using your Toxic Mist as um, a little bit of extra time. But that. that mm, but it is clamless, it is clamless. Okay, good. Okay, nice. Okay. Okay, okay. very good, very good. So I do see where you where you started pushing up. playing a bit too solo with your it's supposed to be kind of a backline it's supposed to have the toxic placement i mean as with any other weapon yeah. a team but i feel like this one a bit i mean hmm. it's a medium interaction with your team like 
the splatter shot could just handle itself like a totally fine a splatter shot junior or maybe a splash even it's kind of like medium it's not as much as an explosher where you really need to be like always as having someone next to you because you can you can handle your okay as you showcase in some of those games this could probably be used as more than just time as you're trying to escape from a position you put yourself in all by yourself um yeah, that you actually went down you could have used to paint with and just charge your ink to put duck basically so that is that and in that last push you notice that the enemy team was distracted by your other teammates, and so you did the the flank route, which is unconventional, but I think it mm -hmm. was and a that, good that's decision. And that's the cool thing, though. It played out as a good decision. Mm -hmm. that, that's the cool but thing. Otherwise, though, because, yeah. Because since the weapon is is not that, it's more mobile than other backliners, so that's what allowed yeah. it to basically do that push. Whereas other yeah. backliners couldn't have handled themselves if they were trying to get the the park lamp in, so that's interesting. But I do feel like in the yeah. rest of the game, you definitely wanna probably play think about your teammates a bit more. Um, and this last game is that the last game I think it is. Um, I did have this, which is peak S rank gameplay. Anyone that wants a good laugh should watch this one. It's something. Okay. Oh boy. So they have. Of course, it's rain. Rush, Miguel, mostly balanced range. And you guys have about the same range. Is this gonna be a fast game? Is this gonna be a fast I game? I have a feeling. Yeah, honestly, like Rainmaker, if you play really aggressive from the beginning. It really works out well, just because like popping the bubble gives you ink around yourself, and then by the time you get the checkpoint, you you're gonna ha like if you get on the checkpoint, you're still gonna have four members out. You, you're not, cause yeah, the checkpoint basically means that you drop the rainmaker and you're able to use your special that you just charged. So that means four specials to use to to, to use to secure the next part of the rainmaker push, basically. This definitely feels like you're, you're not going to be able to get it if you just focus on the Rainmaker too much. Because then you're just basically hoping... Well, okay, you still got it. But that, that was that was <laughs> not very reliable. Because you were basically hoping that by focusing on the Rainmaker, you were going to have more firepower, plop the bubble, and get some kills from it. Because if you don't get some kills, you were going to be in the same situation that we were there in the end. Where you have people shooting at you from all sides. And getting dunking the Rainmaker with this kind of uh, fire on you is not really manageable. Or at least not consistently. So you had to try multiple times, basically. Yeah, I think, um, I, I, think I normally would have abandoned that, except for the fact that your teammates are also jumping to you. So yeah. at that point, I mean, you're going to have backup soon, and your teammates have already made the decision to push up forward. So it's like, well, might as well try to pop it. Plus, I guess, I mean, what is there to lose, really? Because if you're already yeah, exactly. all staggering, but like, if 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 they end up killing you, and and then you're gonna res, you, there's already gonna be someone respawning. If if you don't decide to super jump back into the action, if they do manage to grab the rainmaker and actually start moving up to the checkpoint, by that time someone is already gonna be respawning and ready to defend uh, the checkpoint. So I guess like. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's no game. reason not to super jump. 
Um, and then they had some final closing com comments. Uh, you'll notice in most of those replays, I don't exactly pop off and do some insane one shots. A lot of the time, I get an enemy down to one hit, then they run away. Uh, but I've learned that making them run away is also taking them out of the fight. Uh, the worst is yeah. when you have the enemies that will just ignore how close to death they are and just rush you anyways, and none of the team can back up the fact that you already have splatted them. That's where I get a lot of my losses, I feel, and it gets harder the higher ranks you get. Well, yeah. And I, I, I do think oh, yeah. that's, that's like, kind of the same thing as you ignoring the Wave Raker or just going into enemy ink. You realize that sometimes, uh, some things that the enemies do are just like, scare tactics. And they're not actually gonna be able to, to go through and kill you or like, secure a win or something like that. And, and yeah. that's something they start to realize, and they're like, I try string like coming up close to me, sure, they did damage to me, but they're not gonna kill me, right? So, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just trusting the game data that I know. I know that I'm a roller, he's close to me, he should be dead. I trust this, I continue forward, and guess what? He's dead because I'm a roller and he's a tri stringer. Uh, so, as you get forward to the game, you don't get intimidated, intimidated by what other players do. Because you know that even though they managed to do the first part, they're not going to be able to continue with the second part and actually uh, win this interaction, basically. Yeah. Okay. Tri Tri-string is a really easy to approach. Maybe not really easy, but relative to some other, other things like a sniper, is, if it's easy. No. That's why I like ballpoint, because you have a really fast kill time in your short range mode so if somebody approaches you you can still win that fight okay uh well i guess this is all the replay goes and we don't really have uh others wow. being sent on the on the chat or anywhere so this is this is it we're done uh thank you a bunch neon wyvern for it. assisting with this uh let me let me check oh you were already yeah. vip on my stream Poggers. Um, so I'm a VIP. What? what? How? <laughs> because I gave I gave it to you. Oh, cool. Uh, yes. What does that mean? <laughs> what do I do as a VIP? You have a little check mark thing. Also, CG is saying "vai," which means "bye" in our conling, which is cool. So, "vai," everyone, bye. -a.